Howdy everyone, Pocha here with an Age of Magic video and in today's video we're doing the Hero Spotlight for Lilith, the boss of the Witch's Coven and she will first become available in the upcoming Halloween event but as to how we get her, we are unsure. I have no information but the moment I find out, I will let you guys know. So we'll go over the stats of this character, the abilities and have a bit of a mess around in the arena but you can see hit points coming in at 10 million, nearly 11 and hit points with the heroes are slowly getting higher and higher to be expected. Speed is decent at 258, armor 355k, magic damage resistance 563k, basic magic, uh, magic damage sorry 1.4 million, magical critical hit chance at 49 that's a pretty solid magic critical damage is 2.2 million and the more in-depth stats are here feel free to stop and have a look at anything you see fit the information is there for you to use how you want it's all there for you so we'll jump into the arena now we'll go over her abilities and talk about how this character is going to increase the strength of the uh, witch's coven jumping into the arena we have lilith's basic attack Torture by Poison triggers the boss class mark, deals magic damage to one target. There's a 100% chance to cast two dot effects on the enemy. At the start of the turn, the enemy takes damage equal to 80% of Lilith's basic damage. One stack is removed each turn. So we'll go ahead and we will attack the Siegfried and have a look at the animations. And yeah, so Snake jumps on the ground, comes up and strikes. Nice little 380k. Remember, Siegfried has some pretty strong defense, though. But there you go, two dots of poison on him. So pretty straightforward, basic attack. Um, in terms of what it does, just pretty average. Nothing super great about it. Nothing super bad about it. I mean, it's a hit or miss with most champions. Sometimes their basics are insane, almost a whole ability. And yeah, you can't, can't win them all. Moving on to Lilith's second ability, Snake Charmer, prevents the allies from being debuffed for two turns. Casts four stacks of a buff on allied witches, increasing their chance of critical damage by 100%. One stack is used with each attack, stacking limit four. has a 20% chance per every living allied witch to decrease their special ability timer by one. Oh, so yeah, it's a fairly decent ability. Fairly decent. We'll look at the animation. She'll cast it. Out comes the, yeah, just a red mist flies across the field and you get your buff and there you go. So yeah, it's an interesting ability. There's benefits to casting it first, obviously, mainly the prevent all allies from being debuffed for two turns. That's huge. With her speed as well, she's going to go before most enemies. She's not slow. And... I mean, yeah, you got to consider who is she going to be good against. Where do you want to cast this? Knights, for example, you could easily cast it against the knights. I mean, there's Brynhild that could use a shield bash for someone to sleep, protect it from that. There are Renegades, for example, Assassins, debuffs from them. It's a, it's a fairly powerful utility ability. Then you've got the massive damage on top, 100% crit damage for... Four attacks, four attacks, and you consider we've got on our team Tiona and Flame, who, I mean, their damage is not bad to begin with. So throw that on top of them, you're looking at some pretty dangerous combinations. And then the uh, additional part at the end has a twenty percent chance per living to decrease the special cool time, uh, special ability timer by one. When you consider that you may be leading with this ability, you'll lose that part. But if you don't lead with it then you could utilize it a bit further into the battle moving on to lilith's third ability we have queen's attack triggers the boss mark deals magic damage to one target and two more random enemies for each dead allied witch attack damage is increased by 25 percent cast suffocation on all targets damage dealt by affected enemies is to, uh, reduced by 25 percent per stack and fortitude by 25 percent the target receives one more stack at the start of their turn. Upon reaching three stacks, the target receives damage equal to 300% of the skill's damage and all stacks are removed. So pretty decent ability. We'll go ahead and look at the animation. So she snake just again cast one, two, three, three middle characters, Brynhild, Siegfried, and uh, um, Tristan. So things to note about this ability. Number one, the part where it says 
uh, cast suffocation on all targets. It's all targets hit, not all enemies. So just keep that in mind. Suffocation is also a debuff, so it can be cleansed. So again, keep that in mind. There are a lot of cleanses in the game, so you're going to have to use it against teams that you know are going to let it fester, and you want it to fester. It's going to give you a... 50% damage reduction on the target. You think it's it explodes at three stacks. So one stack there at 25% damage reduction. Two stacks are at 50% damage reduction. Third stack, obviously 75, but it's going to explode and do the 300% damage before removing off stacks. So pretty good damage mitigation ability as well. I think this is going to prove to be pretty useful in some um, what's called Cradle of Chaos situations. For sure, 100%. I think they'll be using Incredible Chaos. Against enemies, though, there are just so many enemies that can cleanse. So just keep that in mind. There's still teams that can't, so th there's going to be use for it. And I, I think that's great. Obviously, you, you want to find teams that work against certain factions. So this, this team is going to excel, especially when you consider the other characters, Tiona and Flame, heavy debuff characters heavy debuff characters this whole team's damage comes from almost the debuffs so like static for example and exploding static and so forth so you're obviously looking for teams that cannot handle debuffs so yeah pretty decent ability i think it's just the rng that i don't like it's just one primary and two random so in this situation i had no option but to hit siegfried when i necessarily don't want to hit him but yeah it's we'll leave it be we'll leave it be Moving on to Lilith's final ability, castable ability. We still have the leadership ability to go as well, but we have Asp, triggers the boss class mark, deals magic damage to all enemies, has a 100% chance to cast three stacks of paralyzing poison on the target and one random enemy, reduces the target speed by 25% per stack, limit four. When the target deals damage to Lilith, except with dot effects, one stack is removed. A critical attack on the target removes all stacks and replaces them with skip turn. Number of turns equals number of stacks. After the change to skip turn, this target cannot receive poison anymore. They also cannot receive poison if skip turn was already cast on them. If Lilith dies, all effects are removed. So, a lot to it. It's a really cool animation, so let's pay attention to that. It's a improved Worm Priest. So let's go ahead and boom, Snake dashes across, and there we go, three stacks of Paralyzing Poison on the enemy, and they will... So if we crit them, let's have a look. Boom. Wow. Mm, seems pretty strong. Seems pretty strong. So what, they're asleep for three turns now. I don't think it tells you how many turns. I wish it did. I wish it did that. That's an improvement, at a quality of life. But they should, in theory, be a turn uh, sleep for three turns. So let's go ahead, attack. The Tristan should... Oh, no, you go. You go yeah. It's a debuff. It's still a debuff, so it can be cleansed like it was just there. Um, so... It's strong. It's really strong, but obviously it has its counters. And so there we go. That's, yeah, that's, a, there's a lot going on. A lot going on in there. The reduced speed thing is pretty powerful as well. That's a 75% reduction to speed when the three stacks are applied. And does it say reduces? When the target deals damage to Lilith. So there's a chance to reduce the stacks as well. So all in all, I think it's it's evened out, but it is still pretty powerful ability, especially when you consider she's going first. So she's a character that has a bit of depth to her in the sense that, you know, what are you casting first? Are you casting her? Let's jump back to her. Are you casting her snake charmer ability? Or are you casting asp because both of them are going to set the fight up in very different ways one's more crowd control one's more protection so there's a lot to consider and i think it's just going to depend on what team you're versing so we'll jump over to her leadership now and see how she's going to benefit the witches as a as a leader
Moving on to Lilith's leadership ability, we have Head Witch. For each dead allied witch, damage taken by Lilith is reduced by 15%. When Lilith takes damage, 50% of damage is distributed evenly across all living allies. This effect doesn't activate when all allies are attacked. If Diana is in the squad, then the allied witch dealing critical damage receives a shield equal to 15% of damage dealt. If Tiona is in the squad, then the allied witch dealing critical damage to an enemy with static adds 5 charges of static. When an allied witch takes any damage, her initiative is increased by 15%. It's the witch taking damage, not Lilith. At the start of combat, other allied witches receive 2 charges of protection. Each stack reduces damage taken by 15%. One stack is spent at the start of the turn. So very interesting leadership ability. Kind of works like Dracona and Troran, where certain characters on the team benefit more for being in the squad. Now, the interesting part is the last part is where the damage reduction isn't when you take damage, it's turn-based. So you're getting two turns of damage reduction and not two hits. Other than that, she seems like a fairly tanky hero, being able to redistribute damage to allies. It is a very interesting squad with her. Now, I think the core of the squad will be Lilith, Banshee, Tiona, and Flame. I think that will be the main four. But it's one of the very few squads I've seen where I think every character on the faction is useful. And I mean, like, useful. I think there is potential to use all of the characters. And that's very rare in factions. There's normally one or two characters that are kind of forgotten that don't offer more to the faction than the primary five. So it's it's a refreshing feeling to see a faction where, again, it has to be proven, all characters may have a use. So just keep that in mind. There are weaknesses to the squad. Again, squad will struggle against factions, I think, that can control debuffs. I think those factions will do quite well. And if they can't control debuffs, then the witches will do quite well. You don't know what Banshee can do. I will do that in a video, a separate video. Uh, she's a very interesting character as well. Overall, it is a in and out team. Remember with Tiona on the squad? I think it is Tiona. Yeah, Tiona reduces healing and shield received by everyone in the arena by 90%. So in PvE, it's a different story, but PvP, that's a... Yeah, you can't really... Especially when the leadership ability states Diana will grant shield. So I think it's just to keep the shields under control. Um, it, they may get out of control. So, yeah. Overall, I think she's a very interesting hero. I think there is the potential to be quite strong. She's fast, and I think that's going to set up the team quite well. The team, again, is, is heavy debuff base. You think Tiona um, and Flame, their damage comes from a lot of the debuffs that the enemy gets placed on them. Flame's damage comes from HP lost from herself and allied witches, but she benefits a lot from Tiona. Tiona applies the static, Flame can come around and just charge those charges up. So keep that in mind. Overall, yeah, it's going to be very interesting. I'll obviously talk to Playcock, get some battle reports out, see how she acts, who she can win against, and we'll go from there. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. I will answer it to the best of my ability and wherever you are in the world. Until next time, please take care of yourself.